Hey loves and welcome back to Life with Shakisha. It's your girl Shakisha Sims. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. I'm excited to share today's video with you. But first, before we get into today's video, if this is your first time tuning in, do me a big favor and drop me a purple heart in the comments box. That way I know that you are new. And as well, go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you never miss any of my videos. All right, so in today's video, if you read the title, it's all about the Wind Down Wednesday. And my Wind Down Wednesday series or segments is just going to be me sharing my love for wine with you all. I will be sharing some wines that I've had before, and I want to kind of tell you why I like them. Some will be new wines, and then some will be wines that you all will be suggesting that I try. Now, I disclaimer. I'm, an I'm a wine enthusiast, I'm not an educator, I'm not a sommelier, I'm not certified, in which I do hope to be certified in 2022, speaking into existence, but I'm just taking you along with my journey and just sharing my point of view as a wine enthusiast. So if you want to see what wine I picked today, keep watching. All right, love, so today I am picking my wine up from Publix grocery store and I do know that some of our viewers are unable to purchase wine from their local grocery store but I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to find today's pick from your local ABC store or liquor store so today's wine is something that I have tried before but I wanted to try it one more time because sometimes you have to try them more than once because depending on your palate which you may have been eating with it it may not taste the same so we're going to go ahead and pick the wine for today's video and I can't wait to share it with you all so let's get into it all right you guys so the bottle of wine that I chose when I went to Publix is this beautiful bottle and as you can see we're matching I did it intentionally but this is Campo V Ajo listen I had to make sure that I did the Google pronunciation <laughs> so I wouldn't jack it up and as well I do have some notes so if you see me looking to the side it's because I want to check my notes and make sure that I give you the correct information but this one right here it is from the um, Rioja region of Spain but some of the things that I want to point out to you when you are getting wine or interested in trying different wines um, decide what region you want to try your wines in different regions have different types of grapes different regions because of the climate and the level of heat will determine how fruitful or how ripe the grape will be as well so these are all little things that you can pick up on just by um, and figuring out where the wine or where the grape was produced. And so as we know in Spain, it is a little bit hotter, so the heat is gonna be a little bit hotter on those grapes. Um, but I have tried this actually one time before. I was a member of the Black Girls Wine Society, and this was one of the wines that we tried, and I really liked it at that time. And so I wanted to try it again because, as I stated earlier, sometimes when you are trying wines, Every now and again, the taste that you have on your palate is going to be different, especially if you may have had a meal before you ate it, I mean, drank the wine, or if you just finished chewing some gum, or just whether you had some type of buildup on your palate, um, it can change how the wine tastes. That's why it's very important when you're tasting wines that you always clean your palate. It's good to have like some of those oyster crackers or some Cheez-Its. Um, that's why a lot of time they serve cheese boards because it's cleaning the palate, cleansing your palate so you can have a um, better taste and be able to better identify all the um, fruits and things like that in the wine. So before we actually get into tasting this, um, this particular grape, this is a um, Tempranilla grape and it says it on the bottle and again in the video I'm going to keep running it you know throughout as I talk about the bottle um, but this grape again is made in Spain or produced in Spain so it's more of a black grape and most of the black grapes are used to make fuller body red wines in which just because it's fuller in body does not mean that it is very bitter or acidic um, all of that comes into play depending on what type of tannins and fruits 
and what the wine was aged in. So one of the most important things that I suggest that you do when you're buying wine, especially when you're trying to um, develop a more um, diverse palate, um, is to read the tasting notes on the back of the bottle. Some bottles don't have it. Um, a lot of times if they don't and it's something that I really want to try and I'm uncertain about, I'll just go to the website. The website always have the tasting notes. So on this one, it has intense red cherries. And you know cherries are sweet, so it's gonna have a sweeter taste to it. Um, and it also has some vibrant um, aromas and notes of other rich red fruit, vanilla, and spices. So the spices will make it a little more bolder, but again, those deep red cherries, along with the type of grape that this is, it should really pair well not pear but it should really make it a little sweet and on the back of this bottle i really like the fact that it gives you um, some levels in which you can kind of determine if this is the wine for you not all bottles do but again that's why it's so important to always look at the back of the bottle so this one has the intensity it is a um, three out of five uh, then the complexity has a two out of five. I'm not really sure about the complexity. I'll have to research that. Um, and then the fruitiness, it has a three out of five. So it's going to be a nice medium um, sweetness, not super sweet, nothing like those sweeter wines like Lambrosco. Um, that's a red wine that's pretty sweet. Or if you go on your white wines like Moscato. So another thing that is very important, I know y'all like, can you get to the tasting? <laughs> but these are important keys to look at because some people may have a very low tolerance for alcohol. Some may have a high tolerance. So it's always good to check the ALC or the ABC. Um, that's just the different uh, variations, not ABC, ABV. <laughs> Those are the abbreviations that they use to let you know what's the level of alcohol i know some people are like oh i drink wine because it is not like liquor listen if the alc is high yeah so this one is pretty high it is 13.5 um so be very mindful when you're drinking this be very mindful so let's go ahead into tasting this gorgeous red wine All right, so you saw me open the bottle in which that was before all of that. And I got this cute little S for Sims and I have another one that has a C. Um, and I like to use those on the wines that I leave sitting out. Um, and typically I only you leave out my red wines that don't require a certain temperature level to stay out because it just tastes better to me. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this um, Red Ohu wine. So a couple of things you want to do. I know, I know. I'm going to get to the taste. I'm going to get to the taste in okay, cases. So, and this is for the person that's more of an enthusiast. If you just want to drink the wine, just drink the wine. But when you're trying to really develop um, your smell and your palate, it's good to make sure that you do a couple of things. Um, the first one is C. You want to look to see. Um, what the wine looks like. So it's a couple of things that you're looking for is the meniscus um, in which it is the light ring that's around the wine. It's probably gonna be hard for you to see because of the light. Um, but see where it's like a little line right there. Really hard to see. But if it's a light like halo, that's the best way to describe it. If you have a light halo on the edge of the wine and if you it's good it's easy to look at if you have like a white background or something like that um, but if it's very light that means that the wine is a, um is an older grape so even though it says 2019 this is an older grape um well i think it's an older grape listen i told y'all i'm just an enthusiast but this is the research that i get so it's pretty light in my opinion, um, 
so it it looks like it's probably an older grape. Another thing that you look at is what is called the legs or the tears of the wine. And you do that by swirling. Swirling will allow you to see the legs. Swirling will also allow you to open up the smells and the aroma of your wine. So if you're not seasoned, I suggest that you put it on a flat surface and spend it. Um, swirl it but if you can do it while it's in your hand without laying it on anything that's w good as well so swirling like I said it op opens it up and then it has these legs you see how let's see if I can get it for you again see how it almost look like teardrops coming down it's been a couple of different things they say that tells you um, the alcohol content if it's slower coming down it's a higher alcohol content if it comes down really fast the alcohol content is not that high isn't that high so these are just all little tricks of the trades that you learn by going to wine tastings and doing your research um, but this one is going down really slow and as y'all saw earlier it's uh what did i say 13.5 which is fairly high um so i would suggest sipping on this again if you have a low tolerance for alcohol um so another couple of things that i wanted to um point out again um after you see swirl you want to smell so this helps you kind of identify what fruits you could be drinking especially if it doesn't have the taste of notes on the back and you want to try to um see how knowledgeable you are about the different smells that you smell in your wine but i can definitely smell the rare fruits definitely smell the cherries almost almost maybe something like some raspberries um but we're gonna see because sometimes what you smell may taste differently once you sip so you have the c swirl smell and sip the four s's some people skip the c part and they just do swirl smell and sip um but you know you want to see what you're drinking you want to make sure it's not cloudy you want to make sure that you know it doesn't look like it's artificially colored and all of those things so let's go ahead and sip this So on the initial sip, I didn't do any extra things to um, determine any other levels of how this wine is. But from the initial sip, I can definitely taste the red cherries. I can get a little bit of that spice. It almost feels like nutmeg. And then the finish that I got off the initial sip, I can feel the alcohol hitting my stomach. Now, if you want to expound on what you taste, um, it's this thing where they call like gurgle, almost like you're doing a mouthwash kind of thing. I know that sounds disgusting, but these are things that you do to really see how the how your palate, your whole mouth tastes the wine from the start to the finish. So start to finish is from when you first sip it, when it hits your mouth, and then the finish is how it tastes as it goes down. So I'm going to show you the technique that I've learned. Um, and they suggest that you kind of leave your lips open a little bit to cause like an aeration. Um, and what that does, again, it just opens up the flavors a little bit more. So let me try this <laughs> and see how this turns out. Oh, wow. Wow. Those bold red cherries that they talk about you can really taste them when you do that um i like it because it definitely fills your whole mouth like you can taste every single cherry it's not sweet nor jammy like i typically if i do a sweeter wine i like it a little um less on the jammy side and if you've had jam you know what i'm talking about um, sweet is like sugar to me. Those are my levels of sweetness. I like a nice, even balance of sweetness and acidity. And acidity is normally the, you know, how it's this thing where I'm, <laughs> you know, uh, if you ever watch Martin, um, Pam be like, is when you get that, 
that twang in the back of your neck. <laughs> That's when it's a little bit too acidic for me. But this tastes really, really good. Let's have another sip. So what I did now, I took another sip and instead of gurgling it, I swirled it all the way through my mouth so I can really see more of the acidity because to me when I like swirl it, it hit those sensitive spots in my palate or my tongue that lets me know like if it's too acidic or not. And this has just the right balance of acidity because it does have red fruits. Some red fruits do have like a little bit of tartness to it. So you feel like that tart, like almost like a very mild sweet tart. Um, I know my descriptors probably are not <laughs> sommelier or wine certified approved, but these are um, the best ways that I can describe it for myself. Especially like sometimes when you do look at uh, wine channels and the sommeliers and the certified wine experts are explaining them, sometimes you're kind of like... Yeah, because I watched this one guy. I love his wine videos, but when he be like, it tastes like pencil shavings and acetone, I be getting skirt. Okay, like, I do not want to taste pencil chippings or acetone, but it's the smells that they get off. It doesn't necessarily taste like fingernail polish remover or pencil, you know. Anyway, so let's talk about my recommendation for this wine if you are a sweet and when i say sweet a sweet wine drinker this may not be for you but i would still implore you to at least try it maybe you know when you go to a party or something like that buy it for the party that way you don't have to be the one stuck with a bottle of wine that you don't like that way you can share it with people and you can at least taste a little bit of it to decide whether you like it or not um, for those that like more jammy wine and jammy is just a nice sweetness, not super sweet, like diabetic sweet, but like a nice jam, um, that you put on your tight toast kind of jammy. I think you would might like this. Um, again, it's very mild, the sweetness, but I think that if you're looking for a wine to build on because a lot of people want to transition from sweeter wines to you know more milder wine this almost puts me in the mind of like a red blend your red blends are normally not that sweet but normally are not that acidic either so i would definitely say that try this out if you're trying to cross over to the less sweeter side of wines and if you're just a wine enthusiast like me like me i really think that you would like this um, like on the bottle, it says it pairs well with pastas, chicken, medium age cheeses, fresh salads, and small bites. Um, or you can drink it alone. So that is my review on this wine. I would definitely add it to my collection. Um, again, normally anytime I try a wine, I try to try it at least twice because something's going to always be different with your palate when you try your wine. And then lastly, before I go, if you see this beautiful wine glass right here, um, I got this off of Amazon. It um, comes with the Dominique silver, and then you can get it with the gold. I did silver just because I feel like silver goes with any aesthetic, whether you have, um, using it as deco or just because it's a pretty glass and i will leave the link to these glasses in my amazon storefront as well as the wine opener that i used um, it is electric electric ran by batteries it doesn't have to be charged and i've had the same batteries for a long time so the batteries last really really well um, and it also comes with the seal cutter sometimes you don't need it some wines have the little seal um tear on there um but that comes along with it as well so i hope you enjoyed my first wine down wednesday video if you have any questions about the wine that i might not have answered for you and if i don't know i'll see if i can find it drop a comment below 
If you have any suggestions on next Wednesday's wine to taste, please let me know. If I don't get to it next Wednesday, it'll definitely be on my list to try. I really don't see this series going anywhere anytime soon. Um, how I talk, you know, how the wine videos go may differ just depending on the wines and depending on, you know, if we just on here chatting about, you know, different wine events and things like that. I just want to share my enthusiasm towards wine. Wine is not a bad thing. Wine is not a one culture thing. Wine is for those that want to have an experience in a glass. And that's what I think about when I drink a glass of wine. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a big old thumbs up as well. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you never miss any of my videos. And as well, if you enjoyed this video, give me a wine glass in the comments. And until next time, loves, cheers.